scriptures this morning. The first one is going to be Hebrews 12, 1. The second will be from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 11 through 18. All of these will be very familiar to you. From Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And from Thessalonians, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I hope that we all in this chapel would look around this space and see that each of us is a benefactor of the great cloud of witnesses within this room. Look around. I trust that each of you can see how others in this room have enabled us to get through difficult times, how they have laughed with and shared our great joys, how they have had sincere and poignant moments with us, how they have admonished us when necessary. Equally, I hope we each see that we are a part of someone else's cloud of witnesses. And within that responsibility, we are to continually encourage others. We are to show patience to those who annoy or disrupt. We are to admonish others when difficult for us to do so. We are to rejoice with, we are to pray for, and we are to love always. Today's chapel is not about admonishment, however, but it is about building up. It is about expressing what we see in others or acknowledging the gifts that we have received from each other. So let me start. Last Friday's chapel, I was reminded of and learned two things. Number one, I was reminded that I'm more proud of our student athletes who aren't afraid to express their faith in front of their peers than I am of their athletic prowess and accomplishments on the field or the court. And number two, I think, I think, I finally got a small glimpse of the power of worship music. I confess to being a traditionalist and hymnist, but I believe you young people showed me the impact that contemporary music can have. So Ethan, Ryan, Daniel, Camillo, and Brooks, I thank you for reducing my judgments and for broadening my world. Zach Rice, you here today? There you are. I appreciate the simple, the simple pat on the back you gave Jesse Cobb during halftime of Saturday's soccer game. A note of acknowledgement like that from a senior to a freshman is so significant. Jesse, nice cool. Nice pull. But more importantly, you keep doing what you are doing on and off the field, sir. You are the man. This bear, you're over here somewhere, I think. There you are. I so appreciate how you have come to Doc and how you are working to make it your academic and I hope spiritual home. I appreciate your spunk and I appreciate your fire. It isn't always being the new kid in school. And to you ladies on the soccer team, I'm equally grateful for how you have welcomed her and other new students. And no, Rochelle, you don't have to worry about the yellow card last Friday night. Mm -hmm. Well, not too much. <laughs> to our Tuesday and our Friday breakfast group, you guys are the best and you know who you are. I enjoy going to the town with you and getting insights into your lives. And an observation of what you are not afraid to do that I respect greatly, and that is to hold hands and publicly give thanks and pray as a group of young men before breakfast. That is very cool. 
to those 15 of you who commute up from Philly every day, amazing. For some of you, it is a two-hour commute each way. Honestly, I do not know how you do it. The sacrifices you and your families make are not something many of us in this room would do. Your perseverance is humbling, and I thank you for the example you set. I could go on and on, but there are others who want to speak as well. I could speak to the senior guys who were at my home a couple of Saturday evenings ago. I could meet to the, uh, I could speak to those of you who will meet periods two and five next quarter two. I could speak to every one of you who are new transfer students and who are just starting your dark journey. Um, you are all, all wonderful creations. Again, I would ask you, look around. In this room, we each have an amazing cloud of witnesses. The other thing I would say is I'm not sure you students realize how much on a daily basis you teach and inspire the adults on this campus. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean, it does not mean that we are not collectively and individually going to have difficult times this year. We are. But I hope it does mean that we can count on each other through thick and thin, in good times and in difficult. My hope is that this will be a year when we encourage freely and admonish sparingly. I hope we'll savor each of the moments we have together.